It's always the same. <laughs> Can't wait to go live and see all these He's beautiful always people. Always this excited. is his time of the night. He's always excited for this. It's the Tim yes, show. Is. What happened there? <laughs> what happened there? Hey. He just made it all about Tim. <laughs> oh, man. I shouldn't have been touching those buttons. I just got to let Pat press those buttons, click them, and bring us in properly, right? Like... Can't even blame it on the alcohol tonight, ladies and gentlemen. It's nothing but Fiji, you know, so I can't even can't even say I was hitting buttons because of a little bit of vodka. <laughs> but the chat is booming. They have been waiting for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 103 with my band Black Templar PB coming out of Austria. This is going yeah. to be... <laughs> A really good episode. We have a lot of people in here that want to chit chat with you. The questions, we'll take those a little later on through the show. But I just want to say thanks for everybody for tuning in. And Pat, how are you doing, buddy? How what's going on? Good, man. Good. Uh, survived another work week uh, in the uh, the mud field. <laughs> As I went live on Facebook today to uh, show people, I'm like, yes, spring is here, and the mud is as well, and. Uh, I survived another week of misery <laughs> in the mud, and uh, it's uh, one week closer to summer, and uh, one week closer to our first event of the year at a uh, Canadian conflict. Yes, next that weekend. Is next weekend. So, ladies and gentlemen, next Friday I will be coming to you live with episode one hundred and four about Honey Badger. Operation Honey Badger, and I will be coming to you from the motel live. So that's going to be fun. Pat, you're going to be holding it down back there at the studio. But um, enough of that. What do we say we get into what we're doing this week? Pat? Yep. We're getting into talking to Black Templar, and uh, we're going to talk to him about paintball in Austria and about his content creation 
and about that beautiful SAR-12 behind him, a wonderful piece of technology <laughs> that has gone through a multitude of iterations and upgrades and yeah. a lot goes on with those markers. Quite a, long. Quite a bit. I've, I know Turn all up. about it. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, I, uh, I don't have one, but I vicariously live through a, a teammate who does have one. And uh, um, several of teammates have had them, and uh, okay. they like them. So yeah, it's an awesome marker. This one is actually really old. It's, I think it's one of the first ones with the new body back then. So I also bought it secondhand. So, <laughs> but it's the most reliable I have from those. I have two of them at the moment. And is that is that your main one? Yeah, of is course. It? Yeah. Of course. I've made it I don't see a I don't see a supremacy on there. Because I don't use scopes. <laughs> I don't no. like scopes. No. <laughs> I had one. I like this guy already. I like this guy already. <laughs> you uh, like this I guy already. It, yeah, I was in this man's garage right here trying to use scopes and trying to set one up on a marker. And I tell right. you, I can't shoot with a scope on a paint gun to save my like to save my life like i can't do it i tried not try i don't even use the scope i'm just like whatever can't do it yeah can't do it same with me i don't <laughs> it's just there's a lot of stuff going on i've tried it a lot and on every marker i've already owned but it, it, i was never there and say yeah that scope is it and it's the same with the su supremacy i mean it's a good innovation the thing it's a very good scope and stuff and everyone who can use it is earns my respect but i'm just too dumb for it <laughs> it's the, the chronoing everything the the fps switches i couldn't go couldn't get those so i stayed with my trusty red dots <laughs> yeah i'm i'm with you time. i can't even use the red dot dude <laughs> and <see>. okay <laughs> and, and wolf saying here the supremacy scope the supremacy scope with first strikes changed my life you, you know lead farmer he messaged me last week asking me about the supremacy and I, I told him it, it, it was amazing. I was like, it's a game changer. And he's like, a game changer for some. Because I guess some people don't need game changers. But if you're looking to operate um, op some optics and you want to drop the cash, I would suggest that. But like you were saying, it's very complicated to learn at first. It's, it takes time to get used to it. I mean, this... Uh... I had very, I had big difficulties to find the, the mask in the, in the circles. I had never could done with that, to be honest. It's just, yeah, there's a head, and where is the where's the right dot? And, and this just takes too long. I'm not a player for. I'm, I do snipe, but I'm the, the least patient sniper ever. I think it's just <laughs> this. So this scope so is you move too red. much. You don't like the, yeah. You're up. What about when you play CQB? When you're playing up close quarters, do you run? Um, what are they called? The uh, eel techs? Do you run any of those, or do you just keep it nice and clean on top, oh, as uh, well for CQB? Uh, uh, eel tech? You mean you mean the brand eel tech? Or yeah, isn't it? What no, are those? Um, what are those the optics called? Site. Like on my lower the hollow sight? Yeah. The hollow sun. I have one. Yes, but I use it on my T15 because it doesn't fit as as much as I like it on the side. This is just an 80 bucks airsoft. Red dot. Right, right. But when you play CQB though with your T15, that's when you will use one. Yeah, of course. Okay, fair. So you I are a traditional. A as well. All right. So that's <laughs> going back like no, no, no optics, no nothing. You're just keeping it iron sights right on top, taking your shot. At least that's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And man, I've seen. A lot of guys over this way. Well, actually, not a lot of guys. There's only two guys I've seen over this way, and they're in the chat tonight. Um, Nicholas Moore and Matt Sauvageau. Those guys. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know Matt. We were talking earlier. Yeah, you know Matt. Um, we were talking, and they showed me their, um, at an event, they showed me their um, SAR-12 setups. Wow. Like, all the bells, all the whistles, the cameras, everything. Yeah, there's much in them. And and now, thank you. I got to see a nice plain Jane. Just <laughs> like I just what? like I said, I can't do it. I tried and I tried, and then just I'm just too uh, I'm, used to shooting I'm a paint gun. <laughs> 
<laughs> I hear you there. So what's new, man? What's going on for this season? What do you have? In Austria, you mean? Uh, or all over, whatever. Uh, COVID is, is gone nearly, so I will try to get to the most events I can get. That's all I have to I can say now. I will go to his, to the SPG events in Austria. I have a little thing that's going on, which I hope will be good. It's limited to yeah. 60 people. Um, yeah, and I hope we'll see you at the Euro Super Game then. <laughs> well, if if it's still going, if it's still going, it's looking a little. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's a lot of yeah. people I can't wait to meet if I go over there. Do you do you normally attend that game every year? The Euro Super Game is, is the first yeah. time. Yeah, but I'm at the bat at the battleground. At I am... battleground, yeah. I think since four years I'd be there at every SPG. So yeah. I, I try to to get there when when I can. And the SPGs is from the from the time of the year they're very good. It's mostly on a uh, on first of April and then the start of fall at September, which is for my work very good. So I can. I, I don't need to take work free place three days, so I just can say, mm. yeah, I go there. So this is it's pretty good. It's a ten hour drive up there, but <laughs> that's a good day drive. Mm. That's that's a good drive. Like when I go up to Ottawa to where Pat the living, when I go up there, and I'll be doing that two or three times this year. It's seven hours each way. Mm. So yeah, I know what you're talking oh, about for those long like. Yeah. So you don't fly though. You don't fly out to any of these events, like when you go to Poland or anywhere else or Germany. I was trying to. The problem is most of the flights to Poland goes through Germany, and then we are back at the topic with the F stamp and stuff. So, got you. And when we drive with the car, there's a little thing you can dismantle your marker completely. I do that. And so, when there is a chance that when you get caught by the police, they don't look at it too much. So I just try to dismantle it completely because on the last bit to really, yeah, avoid take... that in Germany, yeah. that's a weapon, you know, it's 100%. a, it's difficult because you, if you want to go to, to France or Czech Republic or anything, you, Germany is in the middle of everything. You know, you mostly have to drive through it every time. And soon as you hit the border, you are shivering as fuck because if your marker is, can you go there? Uh, have, will, will they check you up and stuff? And so, uh, yeah. Shit. Now it's open borders though, right? Yeah. There's like no, right. so, but you don't know if you're going to get pulled over or, or what they're going to be like, especially that if they do see something that's resembling any type of firearm or something, right? Like if you left yeah. a mag in your front seat or something. Yeah. So what would ha what would happen though? Like I've I've heard about the F stamp being like you have to have it, but what's the consequences? Like, boom, they see it, they realize it's a paintball gun, but what do they do? Um, well, the thing is, it is a weapon in Germany, and those F stamps just signature that it's a non-lethal weapon. And when you get, we have that as we was playing in Czech Republic, that uh, navigation system brought us back to Germany, and we got caught. And because of the F stamp issue, my friends have to leave their four markers. They were just took it from them. And they will be destroyed after that. Wow. So I was lucky I've had a uh, uh, that I had an F stamp on my on that marker I've used at that time and it was very worn out. So you could barely see it. And because of the the, the policeman was very kind to say, Yeah, okay, we, you can keep that one, but all the others have to go. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, because you spend wow. hundreds and hundreds for a year, you know. Um, one of my friends had from McFit make a, a vector kit for his meal sick, and he was the first and only person I think in Europe at that time who has that, and it was just took from him. Oh <laughs> no, no! Yeah, so Unfortunately, is um. So when you go over to battleground. Are you playing with all the big boys over there too, with Barker and all them? Um, I don't know if I play or, with them or against them. I or like to shoot them, them. <laughs> but yeah. I'm very happy to see them again. It's so long, and we were very close uh, before COVID. Um, well, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, of course, because uh, I see want to see my friends from another countries again. You know, that's no something I'm missing now. 
Um, it's something we kind of touched on yesterday when we were doing our test run, but we didn't get right into it or today, sorry. Um, your league size in your <laughs> whole country. Five teams in his I whole country. I have to apologize. I did a research today. Oh, were you? And I was okay, asking okay. one of the, of the players. It are actually 12 teams. 12 teams in his whole in country. The, in the whole country, yes. <laughs> and it we was, have that in, like, a city. Yeah. It's, paintball in Austria is tiny. And... You know, you know every. I can say I know the majority of the player of the players of the whole country. <laughs> this is I that bet. tiny. It's maybe it's so, because when you hit the field or something, you you meet more people than I do. <laughs> well, we have a lot. Um, how many fields do you have? Oh, whew, we have quite a lot, but those are basically yeah. more made made for for you know um, bachelor parties and stuff for rentals. Most of the time, it's the field owners do most not like us, like experienced player to play there a lot because they don't earn much from it. They, you know, we are not, we can with our own stuff, we want to play our own paint and stuff. But you get rid of, um, you, you have, we have some deals with our home fields and stuff. But yeah, it's also a bit difficult. So we mostly uh, travel outside of the country, you know, it's like Hungary or to events and stuff. So, yeah, is what what are the events like in Hungary? Is that like the most common field that you, everyone goes to outside of uh, mm, for Mexico? Outside yes. where you are, is yeah, it? yeah. Mexico players did it. We had an amazing field in in Chopron, which is a, a big city in Hungary, and that was uh, and there was a a monthly Mexico day there. It was a mission based, um, almost milsim game, and it was very cool because it was a uh, an abandoned heaters factory in the middle of the city. Oh wow! It's a massive place. It was my favorite field back then. It's, still, it's not there now. Is it still there? Um, it's still there, but it got it got wrecked because they're building some mall or something like that. I don't know. Oh shit! That sucks. <laughs> I have to say though, it it was in the middle of the city, so I guess some of the neighbors have some stains from first strikes on their on their uh, cars and stuff. So there was no netting or, or something. <laughs> safety not so much okay no okay so i can see why that i see why i see why i get it <laughs> oh yeah. man um, we have to, to be there. Glad, glad that nothing happens back then you know F fps rules are just not existent there so <laughs> really what, what are they where you play in austria you have uh, austria, a 300 yeah. uh, 300 fps limit and everybody is going to to that that's everybody, not just snipers. That's everybody. Everyone. 300 FPS. Yeah. Whoo! I can. I can, I bet you there's a couple people right now in the, in gonna be commenting, and I know who I know who they're gonna be. <laughs> you know, I can see it. Um. So tell me a little bit um about working with Karma Tech. What brought that on? Like, how did you come across that? And what is it that you do? And how long has that been going on for? I didn't. I have, I have made a video from SPG and a day after I released it and posted in the Karma Tech group because of course I was using my uh, the CEO of David Williams call, uh, dropped me a message and, and asked me if I could do some stuff for them. If I promote some, if I, uh, his, the, the marker and products, you know, it's, that's all, it's, it's nothing too fancy. Not, and then we had a deal. Well, yeah, there we are now. I was finished. I had finished it, and then I will come up to this again this year. So nice. We'll so, do, what is, do you do like beta testing on any of their like um, new gear or anything like that? Or no, not really. I mean, if you ask me, I would do it, but it's difficult to send those stuff over there to me. You know, it's. I, I mean, it took about three months to get a marker from america you know and in that really in that in that time yes in that time the 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 local beta players have, have, have everything tested out so because i know like it's, uh it's not worth it yeah if you're a beta tester there's a lot of back and forth of part mm -hmm. markers going back and parts going back and this and that there's uh it's quite intensive <laughs> mm -hmm. i have like i said i have a little bit of the inside information and it 
it's a lot of back and forth. I know there was, yeah, I, I don't know how much I can talk about. It. I got to keep it quiet. So, <laughs> also, those people are all much smarter than me. So, <laughs> I just I can use my stuff, and I l like to learn how to use my stuff. But in when it comes down to to tech and how things working, I'm I'm not the best person to do, test something. Yeah, I'm good at destroying. I'm in the same boat as you. I'm just like, yeah, I, the marker works. I'm good. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not telling no one how to rebuild something. Yeah, I can. I can keep it working. Uh, I can do minor, like I can do troubleshooting and stuff. If I obviously, if I read the manual, I can mm. figure it out. But uh, as far as like <laughs> sciencing it, yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not your guy. I am not the sciencer. <laughs> do you have the <laughs> semi-auto engine or do you go bolt action? I have. I prefer the bolt action, but. Uh, really? the semi the semi engine is better is uh, an innovation on that so it has the same accuracy and the same range and stuff but you have semi so you have a lot more firepower yeah like uh again I just keep referring I'm just gonna use people I know uh my teammate he has the semi auto engine and he says he finds himself more accurate with it because he can follow up his shots faster yes that's yeah. true and the bolt action like do the thing you lose it it's not like you're shooting a kilometer <laughs> so like the semi-auto engine is like i think the way to go yeah yes that's true but i prefer it the bolt action because um yeah it's just the thing i like i like to 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 aim around and bam and clack, clack, that the feeling you know yes that's the, yes. the thing i like i i understand yeah, the I'm, realism of it i'm a pump player like i yeah. i've started playing paintball with pumps I love it. Uh, I love that feeling. Like it's the satisfaction of click clack pew, and then you get the guy out. You're like, yes, <laughs> the click clack pew. <laughs> yeah, click clack pew. pew. I love the click clack pew. It. Uh, what pump it, are you using? What pump? I have a whole bunch. I have a PGP pump pistol. I have my CCMS six. My I have several, but I, I use CMS six most of the time. That's my go to. I will be buried with it. It's my favorite. It's uh, if you want to put in work, that's a good one. And behind me, I have my Azodin KD2 converted to MagFed with an ADN kit. So I can shoot first Ooh. strikes and everything out of it. I might be using that for a bit of Canadian conflict uh, next weekend. So oh, yeah. I'm gonna be playing sniper, I'm going to be a spotter. So <laughs> what I get to use, I'm going to get to shoot at Timmy. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I hear, Great Trader. But yeah, Trader. He was I with like us and did. everything. And then he leaves. That He's going to go play with Matt. You know, Matt's over Joe, right? He's going to go play with Matt. And he's like, Matt and them had this team a while ago. And I was like, bro, you were with us since last year. Like, you played with us last year. See what you're doing, Matt? You and your snipers are all, like, trying to take us all out. I see what they're doing, man. Like, the Karma Tech guys are all building up. They're like trying to do what they can but that's all right because we have lead farmer we oh, yeah. have a good team coming next week because the way it's set up this game <laughs> is that's right he's a super trader ty ty's leading us next year he's i mean next week he's our commander in this mag fed only game and he's going up against kevin robotai from quebec and he himself is bringing 40 deep and um it's, it's gonna be. Good there's day. a lot of guys. It's gonna be a good day. It's like pretty much like Ontario versus Quebec, right? And, right. and this trader. So it's I'm it's gonna Quebec. be. It's it's gonna be good times, right? Well, okay, if you're from Quebec, then that's all right. Um, I'd like to see you over here at an event. Me and you were talking about PRZ earlier. Yeah. Don't drink with this bastard, or you're gonna die. <laughs> well, tell us this what's this story I i'm sure I i'm um, sure dr rush could tell us in the chats yeah, he can get it started it. you should tell it i mean it's i, I know what he means but <laughs> let's say uh when well let's hear it let's hear it come on um when me and my team arrives uh, at spg we have uh, some fixed things we do and one of those is to get wasted <laughs> okay i like this guy um, already like I'd say. <laughs> it's yeah we 
uh, how should I say that we are people for party, you know, we are there and we do a, we do our paintballing. Of course we did that. We do that and we do everything on the field we have to do, but afterwards you can come over and drink with us and probably fall asleep. We are really into drinking at events. So, <laughs> All right, so you're up late doing your thing. Now, we have a lot of guys over here that like to party and do the same thing. And this was my first year um, camping. I've always done motel rooms. I don't okay. camp. I don't do that. I don't camp. I don't do that shit. I like to be in a motel room. I like to have a hot shower. I like to have TV. I like my meals. I like to go sit in a restaurant. You know, I like that part about it. Okay. <laughs> but... I like hearing the war stories from all the guys when I show up the next day at the field. They're like, oh, last night, man, we were up around the fire, you know, blase, blase, this, that, and the third. I like hearing those stories, and it's like, damn, I'm going to do this one these days. So last year, I made it a note. You know what? I'm camping. Did some camping, had some fun, got pretty fucking drunk a couple of times, and um, went to the hospital. Well, alcohol poisoning sick as fuck <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah that was not that was not paintball though that was that was somewhere else but yeah i got hammered and ended up in the hospital with alcohol poisoning have any of your games ended up like that <laughs> not really I, i've ended up sleeping on an ant's nest once Ooh, that's terrible Ooh. i i was i, I think they they leave me so i don't know i i didn't have some red stinks or something on my body I guess I was thinking too much or something for them. So, <laughs> but that was one of the. It was just there. Um, it's it's a very good story to be honest. It's we was there and we was waiting and there was a, a guy called Beer Goose who is also close to the Vanguards and on them, and another guy and we was waiting for a friend of him. And his name was Tulu. He's, he's he was from Poland. Okay. And the thing is, uh, he Tulu the, the guy showed up Tulu and with his with his lady and. After a little bit of talking and, of course, a little bit of drinking, uh, we find out that she is uh, she's working for a vodka uh, company. Oh, nice! So, and we and I said, okay, but where is it? And she asked, what What do you mean? And I say, vodka. You don't you have your one with you? And she said, yes, she has a few. And I said, bring it. <laughs> we need and, to sample this. Item. Yeah, and the sample was two bottles of vodka. And it all ended up like, um, yeah, like a Ramstein video, basically. <laughs> and then I found myself the next day on an ant's nest sleeping, and I had to get up, I had to get ready for paintball in about an hour. <laughs> so it was very stressful. <laughs> no doubt. I, uh, again, <laughs> that would be. That's like, oh man, I'd be pissed. Woken up after a night, anthill. That's definitely a good one. I woke up with a foot in the toilet. That is uh, not as good as an anthill, though. Whoa. From paintballing or just drunk? Just, uh, you know. Yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just Pat being Pat. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, Nicholas Moore, he's saying here, get wobbly and hopefully you'll find your tent. <laughs> he's probably done that a few times. I'm sure. Um we had a few comments up here I wanted to... Pat, do you want to pull up those stars, buddy? Oh, yeah, yeah let's click over here. here. We can check out... Where? Click over where, bro? Oh, I see. I got you. Okay. Which here one do you go. want to go? Oh, there you go. Let's go with this one. Matt Silva Joe is saying, reaching out to you, saying, Hey, buddy, I miss your awesome videos. Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to check out his amazing content, there is a link in tonight's description for his channel, YouTube, Facebook. So go give him a like, give him a follow, and uh, let him know that you've seen him on the Frontline Paintball Podcast. So, your channel. What got you started in your channel, and what got you into content creating? How? Uh, yeah. Um, that was... I was, like I started paintball and I was one of the first viewers of all those paintball videos that showed up at that time, you know, where Slim and all the guys was, yeah. was the first ones, I guess. And I was, whoa, okay. that's cool. But I never was, could get myself to make something like that. I, I like the filming, but I mostly scrap the stuff I make. This changes when I was at France at the Citadel, where I met Ash and Slim. Basically, and okay. This changed there because I've 
<laughs> I've shot off Ash's camera on his head. So, and he was, <laughs> <laughs> and after that he was, that's a, a big, it's a long story. And he was searching for the guy who shot his camera. And I was avoiding him because I, I was thinking he wanted me to pay for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> he probably was. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, the vanguards then said, no, it was rule of it was him. And yeah, I said, yeah, okay. And I already had my wallet in my thing. And she was saying, no, I want to film you. I say, why? Yeah, because the shot was awesome. Okay, <laughs> you can do that. Um, and with that, we, after that, we go back to the field. And he was filming and stuff. And I was kind of impressed by that. And uh, after that event, I say, yeah, maybe I can try that as well. So. And like uh, I watched a couple, of, you did a good job. Like the quality on them is top notch. Like, do you Thank mind you. if I play one? Go ahead. I have one. I watched a couple, and this was like I liked your intro and everything. I just want to show it. We'll just go two minutes of it. Yeah, sure. Mm. I like that Austrian mag fed. I like that. Welcome back. Like all this looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It took a bit to make this. No doubt. I want to talk to you. I, I, I want to get into this video. Can you, um, as actually we'll talk about it after. I want to learn about, um, maybe you can give some tips to some people out there where they can what type of software you're using, like where you're getting these overlays and everything. Yeah, yeah, we'll get you to talk to us a bit about that. Look, look at that. It's clear 1080. looks amazing. It's not grainy. Yeah. That not was a good day. Not pixelated at all. Uh, where was that this? That was actually the field in Hungary where I've told you before, in the middle of the city. That was that field. Okay. Shooting bolt action. Look at that round fly nice and straight, eh? Enemies that long distance unseen. It requires a lot of training, patience, and you have to be able to focus. Yeah, that's what they said. But what nobody talks about is that sometimes it gets really, really boring. <laughs> but this time, I want to go close and personal. Yeah, but. <laughs> Take it to the site to the enemy. <laughs> but look at this place. Like, look at us. When you see it like that, and this was this was in summer. Really, that the whole city is around this, okay. and you have no idea when you play there. Two objectives here. The first one was to secure safes. This was put it all around the area, and the second one. Gorgeous, like just like a gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> I like the little trees everywhere. Like it's just a perfect little environment. Like, was and then yeah, the building is <laughs> decrepit. First, secure, we quickly move to the second one, not knowing that this nice safety railing. The enemies. So I got my first CQB fight earlier than I expected. The funny thing about that was that we only had allowed to use the half of the building because the other one is shortened to collapse. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's like, like that's like at PRZ, it's starting to collapse too, like the walls and stuff. <laughs> like it's it's taking a beating. I like that. And that was in Hungary. That was in Hungary. Yeah. In Chopran, was it called? It, that was the factory I told you before in the middle of the city. It's. We all the paper players in Austria who have visited this place <clears throat> once are crying when they think about it because it was our field. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. There was a I'm field... saying that field looks insane. I agree. Yeah. I got to play at a field kind of like abandoned factory warehouse place in uh, Montreal, Complex B, and it was like that. It was like is like you know sketchy enough to make you scared because you're like. Am I going to get tetanus uh, in this room? Am I, is the, everything going to fall apart? And just like the, the darkness and the shadows, and it was just crazy. A big, huge building. Uh, it's They're fun to play in, man. Airsoft mm -hmm. guys, are, they get a treat getting to play in all those like m crazy places. That's definitely one thing that they have an advantage over us in. 
The problem with this is mostly is that we are the the the, the, the stains of what the yeah. what the paintballs it's leave. The paint. That's not the problem. But powder balls, powder balls are a thing. We were talking about those too, weren't we? We were talking about those earlier. The powder balls, like they use them over their street, like loves them. I br I personally never use paintballs. I use powders or first tracks. So really, yeah, yeah. It's, that's what he's telling me. At yeah, least here, I'll let you tell Pat. I'll let you tell Pat about it. It's just, um, I just say, um, I don't like it that the pa the paintballs most of the time make the marker dirty and stuff. And then with the powder balls, you have better accuracy. The effect yes. is better, you know. And that's the reason why a lot of players use them. So, I mean, they are expensive on their own. Yes, so they are. If you have, but you on the most games we play here, uh, you shoot less. So. Yes, you don't shoot as many. I wonder if we could use the powder balls here in an event as a, as classified as a round ball. Uh, I know some fields in Quebec, it flies. But uh, If anyone's in the chat that can let us know if we, besides in some of the places that Pat said in Quebec, if you can let us know in the chat if we can use powder balls at these events. Don't think so. Because you know what? Like you were saying, to keep your markers clean and everything, wow. Mm -hmm. they are I would be buying that. Yeah. Extremely expensive. But yes, they look cool. Much when more they go than off. a first strike, Pat? Much more than a first strike round? They're just hard to get. Like they're hard to find. I know Rap 4 makes them or used to. Tomahawk as well. Yeah, there's some places that sell them. But. I can't. I, I couldn't give you an exact number. I'd have to go look it up. But I remember them being expensive, and they only come in like two hundred and fifty or five hundred, like a jug. But like he's saying, they work really good. I've seen some that have dimpling, like a golf ball, and they travel like pretty straight for a paintball. Like for a ball, oh. they're traveling straight. And I would be all... careful with those. Yeah, because they have around. The, I think they have an extremely big shell, really big. So oh. they uh, they hurt. Those are tingling. Those things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, eh? Well, yeah, because it's probably like a couple millimeters thicker or something. Mm -hmm. I think three about three. And that and that wee little bit is a whole lot, right? We have Tyrell. He's asking you a question here. Um, what made him call himself Black Templar and use the cross on the shield? Um, uh, I'm a fan of Warhammer 40k. Oh, sick! And we were, and there, I was sitting with my best buddy, who is the leader of our team, and we came from another group who just disappeared. So, and we are the only ones left who play, still want to play paintball. So we have to make an, we can join someone, or we made our own team. And because I'm the, the one who is creative and that stuff, I was thinking about what we do. And we have two things. We have two things we like. We are like we, we like heavy metal. Of which course. means we wear black the whole time <laughs> and we are we do like screaming a lot on the field so what and that's what came up with something from warhammer 40k and first we have gone with the space wolves yeah i guess that's a that's a race in that game in that lore and but they are blue like a smurf and that color doesn't fit Get so up. we kind of like the logo but not the, <clears> the thing However, it's all ended up that we took the Black Templars, and also they have a shield and a cross on their logo, and I just reimagined that for our paintball team. That's all. See? And it's... Well, there you go, Ty. And <laughs> you took one of my questions off my whiteboard tonight because I was curious about that, on where all that originated from. I liked it. Pretty cool. I like to right. learn new things, and that was pretty damn interesting. We are, we are victims of pop culture, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's cool. It's I find a like a lot of guys who play paintball are into Warhammer D and D and all that stuff. Like uh, one of the people we partner up with for this software, uh, Anvil of War, they're D and D or not D and D. Yeah. They do all Warhammer videos and pl like player books and stuff like that, like guides and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you Shout doing outside my boys, of paintball? Ottawa Luxury playing out in BC this weekend. Hey, Mike. Excuse me, but yeah, like, uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's everywhere. <laughs> For sure. I would be. It's also very green. big. I can use anything from it. It's yeah. gigantic. Yeah, there's there's so much lore and so much stuff, and mm. it, 
it's a cool team name, Black Templars. Like, <laughs> I was worried about it the first bit because it sounds really edgy. You know, it's just oh god, those guys do like they are the most cool stuff in the world, people. But it's settled now, so. There you go. You're safe. <laughs> and, yes. And you have a you have a you have a one of a kind look. Um. Yes, we have. We we're black. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I... Oh, did, did you mean that? I misunderstood you now. <laughs> I didn't mean it just by like the way, just wear it all black. Like you, you do customizations and stuff, right? Like you've painted your mask up a little bit different, so yeah. breaks it up a little bit. So you do different things. Like you have a patch vest behind you. Do you guys wear that? Do you wear that? No, that's just me walking around at the events. That's it's, just off the field. That's yeah. old school. That's awesome. But it's that is old I, school. I wear it everywhere. <laughs> Can you show us that? And you you have my what? man Ray's patch on there too. Yeah, so, Ray's ladies old... and gentlemen, we've all seen like patch panels, wow. and we can keep those at home, right? Well, so we my to... man right here has like Pat was saying the old school style done up here and he's rocking it on a vest and he wears this at events can you tell us about some of your patches where, where some of the stories behind them or anything okay. um let's start those of course are my friends here you know the yellow guy barker ray yeah um those there that is the hedgehog patch here sorry that's i got that patch from hedgehog as i shot off his camera so i have it on that the beer clan are friends from the Netherlands, which we met at SPG and most OMG events in the UK. Those are very cool guys. I love them. Okay. Um, this side is, yeah, it's from my time in the military. That was, that's an Austrian patch. That was the platoon I was there. And that was, was is a, is a prize patch for long distance shooting. Uh, this is a patch for my favorite band. <laughs> oh, just made that on my own. And on the back, I just have event patches. From across everywhere on the I top like there that. are the, the events from the battleground from the last years the brotherhood then, of steel <laughs> yes and it, it was used for for some cosplay stuff first um here those are the omg events there which okay are in uh, sweden france uh, in the uk this down there that little one here is from a uh, event in bosnia oh nice it was an abandoned hotel. Uh, I have a picture of that. That looks really cool. And on that side, there were basically, um, this was the first event I've, I've already been. This one here. Yeah. First one and ever. Are, yeah. It was a hardcore Milsim like game. That. And I was just a little boy who got shot from every side and stuff. And <laughs> yeah, my muscle hurts until, the, until, until today. And that was the team patch from that event. Um, that's an Apache Snow event. That's an, an Czech Repub Czech uh, Milsim game. That's every year. This is from Drug War. This is uh, an event that was at the field. We were just watching the video. This was the only okay. Austrian MacFit event. Of course, SPG. Then we have the Quangle Banger. That one is. I love them. I just got them from a guy from from that squad uh, because we was drinking together. <laughs> yeah, that was it basically. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Um, and everybody in the chat, I'm sure you love to see that because we all love our patches. Everybody has um, some type of morale patch or um, blood type patch, whatever it is, team patch, your own personal patch or your podcast patch. We all have them. We all love them. And each patch to me that I wear has a story. Just like yeah. every one of yours has a story, and th that's really cool. Thank you for sharing that with us, man. I like that. Um, we have Gabriel here asking you, we were looking to hit up Russia's big game in 2023, but with everything going, obviously, we're looking at other places. Any recommendations? Uh where is he from? Is he from Europe or from the States? It would be help. In Europe, you Gabriel, can go. Uh, let us know where you're from, brother. I mean, when you go, when he's in Europe, I would recommend to go to Sweden to the Hellskate event because that place is awesome. The battleground, of course. Of course, that field looks amazing. Uh, and anything, um, Sandy Bridge in the UK is also cool. I want to visit that as well. And I've never been there, but the 
the pictures are there. If he wants to be places from the, if he wants as a simple big game, he should go to the battleground, in my opinion. So. Okay, so go to battleground, and that is this May twenty six. If you go. And you want to register, you can save yourself some money if you use promo code TANGO. So, mm -hmm. use promo code TANGO. Or if any of you over there in Europe or anyone's attending to uh, go to this event, when you register, use promo code TANGO. Save yourself some money and gives me a little bit of a kickback too. And I'll appreciate that. And we can drink some beer when I get there. But with that being said, <laughs> let's... Uh, Get back into what we were talking about earlier. We were talking about content creating and your YouTube channel. So you seen the hedgehog. He inspired you. He got you going into paintball. So now how did you, were you drilling him with questions about cameras and everything like that? Did you just put that all together yourself? How did you get your, your logos and how did you start doing all that? Poof. Uh, it was just a natural process. I, I've okay. cameras was of course I've used a GoPro because everyone does it. So, and the only thing I ever did on my own is that I made uh, self uh, mounts because the GoPro mounts are shit in my opinion. So this mm -hmm. one is uh, made out of aluminium. This one holds, and I do that a lot to make my own uh, camera stuff because it's that those things are not made for paintball. You know, it's they got when it get hit, yeah. it's it's. It's done most of the time. And the logo, um, the interest is what you have seen there is you can find that that's stock footage. You can just Google stock footage. This is it's, it's stuff you can download for free or at, with the Creative Commons li license. Okay. And you just can put in your pictures. The logo on that, that's just uh, that's made before it. You just have to put in the logo. So, so it's I've just like that. plug and play? Drag and drop kind of thing. Not really. It. it uh, so what, what software can be do you edit with? Uh, I, I've edited with Premiere Pro and After Effects. So it's like the same thing. How you have your um, your storyline and everything below, or however you set it up. Okay, keyframes, doing all that. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, there you go. There's there's a good pro tip right there. So if any of you are new content creators or an old content creator that's just never had a wicked intro and you want one. Do something like this. I really like your intro. And where do you get those? Um, there are sites. Um, you just have to Google it. Just Google it. You need a theme. Like, for example, Cyberpunk intro and Google in uh, Premiere Pro template or After Effects template. And then if the first sites pop up, of course, you have to pay for those stuff. And that is really expensive because people have a lot put in a lot of work in those but you find a lot of them also they are free and with those you can work a lot so put in some pic put in your pictures there are there's a mate uh for for swap so there you have the the pictures on that line mm -hmm. where they are used for the promotional thing of that that animation if you want to say it. right and you just can swap it with your pictures or your video and that's all okay. and then you can play around with it you can shorten it up there you can put it longer there you, can make it slow more and stuff. This is awesome. And I think those are for all free because Adobe is is not a free software anymore, I think. But those ex also exist for free software for video editing. So uh, yeah. you can get everything I, I do. If you want, The things you see in video you do, don't cost you anything. Um, a, a little bit amount of time. But you can do it completely free. No excuses out there. Up your game. No. Don't spend money. Spend time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I'm I'm done with that. What's up, Pat? The whole video. I want to get a, a good view of this SAR 12 here. What body kit do you got on that thing? Uh, that's like an a body kit. A, is that a Accuracy International body kit or something? Mm -hmm. It's an AVP. Nice. And I've made that on myself. I've got it and... In it is a free painted uh, lower body of the SAR, which is glued in with epoxy. Yeah. And I've put a remote line, do a line down there and put in the bottle because nice. I don't like remote I like lines. That. No, I do not like remote lines either. That's yeah. slick. I also appreciate the paint job. It's also a bit damaged there and stuff. Yeah, that's also one thing I like to do, and that is uh, painting my markers. 
that's I do that quite often. So next time what you see you this thing, it has another paint chip on it. Oh yeah, what do you do to your T15? Um, basically, it's some kind of, how is this called? Hex, hexagon. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know what you're talking like the camel style. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and just uh, the usually it looks like some, some out of Call of Duty, you know, just brown and stuff. <laughs> So you I don't will... leave none of your markers, like, custom factory color or nothing like that? No, that's boring. I got an <laughs> anno mine. I got an anno mine. That's what I'm doing. I don't want to spray paint it. I like anodizing. I'm all about it. <laughs> that I don't know. Spray better, paint's but fun, I have... though. Hmm? Spray painting markers is fun, though. Like, I've done it. Oh, I'm going to spray paint the handguard. 100%. But uh, I just like the anodizing. I don't know. I, I just spray painting it sometimes to me. I'm just like worried I'm going to mess it up. And then you got to take it all off. I'm just like, eh. But yeah. it, at least if you it, it. don't like the color, you can just spray paint over it if you spray paint it. So that's an advantage to that for sure. It's just, <laughs> again, mean spray paint cans. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think is Tyrell referring this to you? Yeah. Is he going to make a video soon? Wow, love your videos, bro. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. You were talking earlier today, and then next thing I know, that's, 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 that's not we had this pop up. Here's a little teaser for you, Ty. Money. <laughs> <Bruh>. Nice Hedrick. <laughs> that that was good. I like that. So that guy was a juggernaut. A with sneak the peek. Hmm? That's. What was that guy with a target on him? A juggernaut? Is that why he was taking so many hits? No, that was just a jersey. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know why he takes so many hits. Maybe he doesn't. He just wasn't that. calling them. No. <laughs> he just wasn't calling them. Like, damn, subject. damn! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Teresa. Really <laughs> she's asking when I'm going to Cali next year. I'm in the middle of getting cleared for my pardon right now, so I will be over there for the 2023 season. You will see me. I will be running through that desert field. In a rush, trust me, I can't wait. Um, sorry, just a little <laughs> off there. <laughs> off topic. Off topic. That's yeah. I I like your. I can't wait. So when do you think you're gonna drop this video? When will it be ready? Depends. Uh, maybe next week. Maybe next week. Cool. Yeah, it's of course I I can only edit after work, and I have two hours yeah. then. So I I give my best to go back in it. This is also. I haven't done a video very long time now, no? and I'm kind of rusted in this, but I give my best to go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, also, we won't keep you much going here longer. we got 10 more minutes. Uh, if there's any more questions you guys have in the chat, please drop them to him right away because this is going on like 3 a.m. over his time right now, and he has a busy day with his wife when he gets up in the morning. So when it comes 10 o'clock, we're going to shut her down. So please, people in the chat, share this video tonight if you've liked it. Leave a like, smash a comment, drop us a question for him right here. He is the one and only Black Templar PB. He is here tonight. So give him some motivation. What, Watch his videos. What, what, <laughs> Yeah, watch his videos. Watch Give him some motivation. One. He he wants to drop them out. I was going to ask you, besides the hedgehog, seeing him, obviously he motivated you to get making content. Did he continue to be the one motivating you, or did you start following off others? No. No, he didn't. I mean, Ash is cool and all that stuff, and I like him a lot. But you know you go farther in, the, in kind of inspiration. Yeah. And, uh, you find it from different things and I'm, I'm as I said I'm a victim of pop culture and I think I got it from movie series computer games and then there's stuff you you just see on the screen and, and think can I do it on a video like uh, jumping over something or, or can I 
uh, at my at, I have a field. I have a little piece of uh, of a, a woodland area behind my the, the house where I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I've also featured that in one of my videos, and I was climbing there, and I was thinking, should I do that? Should I filming it when I climbing up a, a rock wall? Because you know you never know it who is watching it and try to try it at home. But I was just going, yeah, and I was looking at it and. It looks so amazing. I mean, it's come came straight out of a Call of Duty game when you ramping up that yeah. fucking thing, you know. Yeah, it's that B footage, right? You don't see that on anything that someone is climbing on the paper foot. You know, and that just said, yeah, I put that in. <laughs> don't climb things because if you get caught while you're climbing and get shot, you're coming down. That's I remember true. the first, like, way back when I started playing paintball. I'm like, why doesn't anybody that? climb trees? These guys are idiots. <laughs> Nobody's going to look for you up in a tree. I climbed a tree. I got up there. Yeah, you get up there. I'll find a dandy. You might shoot one guy. And then the second they figure out you're in the tree, mister, they're not letting you out of there. And it hurts. <laughs> and then you got to come down. <laughs> Coming down fast, we're getting shot. Not cool. <laughs> Don't <laughs> oh, man. So is there any, I know we talked, we touched on it very lightly um, at the beginning of the show. You're wanting to get to as many games as you can this year. What about traveling abroad? Have you ever thought of coming to Canada or over to the United States? Because if you want a mag fed game, I can tell you right now, Operation Honey Badger is going down this July or any July. Like not July. just this year, next year too, if you're thinking, you know. I would love to go to Canada. I was supposed to do that um, in the year, in a few years back, where the first Bed Real was. Mm -hmm. Twenty nineteen, eighteen, and, I, and because of uh, issues at work, I couldn't afford it. But I will want to do that. So I don't know if the Bed Real thing is still a thing. I don't know, but that I don't. It doesn't matter what what game it is. To be honest, I just want to travel to Canada. I love travel, but. Mm -hmm. All I have to organize my time and stuff. You know, it's not just I can't not go and say, yeah, I go there, 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 and there. Yeah, Unfortunately, yeah. I would love to do so, but it's not possible. So, okay, here's a follow up question on that. Then, if you were to come to Canada, would you want to come here for like a week and do just one event? Would you like to come for a couple of weeks or set it up in the schedule so it's like a week and a half, so you still get two weekends in to do balling? Check yeah. out a couple of events, a couple of fields, do something like that. That sounds good with the two weekends. When I go there, I want to at least stay a week or maybe two. Because like, you can do it, you can combine it with a vacation as well. So. Oh, yeah. Yep. there's. Uh, I've recently learned of a couple ways to uh, do things on the cheap. Like you can rent RVs and stuff like that. Like nice. they're pretty nice. Like I'm renting one for D-Day for the weekend and the price is like it's super cheap. So you have a RV, which your family could sleep in, air conditioning, bathrooms. Uh, you can make meals, so that saves you a pile of money. Mm -hmm. So you could stay yeah. somewhere nice, go to a couple of events, bang them off, and then have a nice base of operations for the family and not be sleeping in tents. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, man. Of course, you could have a, a tent for yourself <laughs> so you could pass out in it. <laughs> now, now, this here, this leaves no surprise, and this guy will bring you – an amazing, an amazing flavored drink. Mr. Matt Sauvageau, he's saying here, if you come to Canada, a PRZ, Honey Badger, any other Magfa game, I'll pay your entry and drinks. And when he oh. comes with drinks, he, he doesn't come short of any, any drink. I guess the drinks he, will be more expensive than the ticket. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, we'll, we'll get you some drinks. I, Matt, I will remember that. <laughs> and you know what <laughs> us on the front line we'll, we'll 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 kick up paint we'll kick up your first strikes yeah so there's your entry there's your paint there's your booze i'm sure somebody look at dr rush That's he's empty. in the chat he's asking he's asking dates if it's for this year uh richard um it is july Next week, we will be having the organizers and planners of Honey Badger on the show. So we'll have all the information you'll need for that event then. Um, D-Day, that's another good event that you would like, but it's open class. It is in June. Yep. That's in June. That's another 
Excuse me. That's another great game. Best open class game you'll see right there. And um, the one of the best MagFed event games you'll see right there, too. Great so games. Maybe from Nightmare from D-Day. Could that be? Nightmare is going to be yep. a D-Day, yeah. Yeah, and he's going to be there this year, too. Slim's going to be there. Wolf's going to be there. Callista's going to be there. Um, the Command Bros will be there. Myself, Lead Farmer, um, Matt Silva, Joe, Nicholas Moore, um, the Hitmen. Um, ha are you familiar with the Hitmen up this way? MagFed players, the Hitmen? Sniper? Yep. Tyrell, nice yep. He'll, he'll be yeah. there. That's very good videos. Yep. See, Ty, I'm telling you, you keep those videos up, buddy, because, see, he even knows who you are about a sniper, and he just said very good videos. Cool intro with the, the guy lying there in the piston. Is, it, is that him? Which one? There's an he intro has the cross come up at the beginning. And there is a, um, there is a doorway, and the, uh, yep. the hitman is standing there, and then one guy is lying down there. It's, it's, it's him. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, that's him. That's yep, awesome. That's I him. like that. Yep, he's done great content. He hasn't been doing it for a whole long, but man, what he has been doing, he's been doing great. Like just past year, really. Oh, yeah. Just this past long. year, he's put it out. Yeah, man. He just like he's just had a bunch of footage saved from the past few years, and now he's just going hard. And um, he got his first gig as a commander coming up here next weekend at PRZ. So, uh, yeah. Big Sounds things like are starting to, to happen for the guy. Yeah, man, yeah. really good things. I'd like to see that. Um, with that being said, I would like to thank you for staying up as late as you did, man. I really appreciate it. It is, again, 3 o'clock in the morning over there. I would love to have you on here again. Um, we'll do it more to your time. We can do it on a Saturday where we could just get up someday and just chill, you know, hang out, shoot the Love breeze, and talk paintball. Maybe after one of the events or something like that, let us know how it went or one of your events or something. But um, I want to thank everybody. With Rudolph. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to thank all of you tonight in the chat. Thank you for liking, sharing, following. Nicholas Moore, thank God, buddy. You're back in the chat. You're always watching. I know you were, but I had the block thing on there, and Pat came through work magic, and you're back in the chit chat live better than ever. Gerald Laveau, thank you for showing up. Pat, what do you have to say, buddy? Again, just want to give a shout-out to my boys, Ottawa Luxury. They flew out to BC to Big Island Paintball. Hopefully, they're going to bring home the gold this weekend, and I appreciate them trying to get it for me. That's awesome. Uh, I want to thank all the Patreon supporters for helping pay for this wonderful software we use to bring this to you every weekend. And I want to thank our sponsors for giving us the gear to get out on the field and to kick ass. And uh, just thank you guys. And with that, you guys have a good weekend, and we'll... Uh... Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Oh, 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 oh. We got to let our man take us out tonight. Oh, okay. We got to let we got any shout outs or anything, thank yous or anything you want to kick out to anybody out there? Oh, just want to thank you for having me and to every ballers out there, rock on, do your stuff and have a good weekend. Uh, okay, that's what he has to say. <laughs> so, Pat, why don't you do what you do, buddy? Get ready to bring us up. And, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you guys all next weekend. Nightmare Paintball, Nightmare Games, Paintball Magazine. Matt Sauvageau, Luca Policello, Stilgar, Owen Wesley Smith Flapin, Henry Buzzati, Planet Eclipse, Impact Pro Shop. Commando Action Center Painball Mirabelle Armagillo <laughs>